The old saying that we are what we repeatedly do seems to be correct. Uh, habits shape who we are both individually and communally. And basically, if you think about it, we label ourselves, we label other people based on their habits, like a smoker, a drinker, a gym rat, um, you know, a priest is someone who prays a lot, a bookworm is somebody who reads a lot, etc., etc. So habits uh, are as applicable to individuals as they are to the community as a whole. So as I'm going through this video and as I take you through the different points of habits, I want you to apply this not only to yourself and the individuals that you know, but like to humanity as a whole because we do act in habitual ways and it does define who we are. By the way, if you look at humanity's habits, do you think we are good people? Well, we'll get to that. So habits have a tendency of evolving along with our understanding of ourselves, like who am I, but also our understanding of the world, like where are we, what are we doing here, what's the point of life, etc. So basically, if you look at the past, we used to venerate the standard of tradition as something that was a good habit. Now, this has changed, or it's changing at least slowly, uh, to the standard of survival. So if I'm looking at somebody's habits or my own habits, I'm like, is this a good habit or a bad habit? I used to say, well, my parents used to do that, and their parents used to do that, and their parents, therefore, it's a good thing. But today we look at it, and we're like, okay, well, is this healthy? Does this help me survive? Is this a good thing? So that standard shifts, and you'll notice, like, how many cultures used to do human sacrifice? How many people do you know used to smoke but stopped smoking? Uh, you'll notice that the belief in God is fading away slowly with each subsequent generation, well, at least in my society in North America. Um, tribalism, people are starting to understand more that we are all human beings and that we are all united. Um, pollution. Pollution is a terrible habit that's going directly against our survival. We all know it. Corporations do it anyways. They're not listening to us and our governments are bought off, whatever. That's for another video. But we know it's a terrible standard, or sorry, a terrible habit because it goes directly against our survival. War, wealth, inequality. Listen, I could go on with this. Good and bad habits. Let's use the right standards here, okay? So it takes more than belief to abandon a habit because it takes more than belief to create one. So I can't just be like, well, smoking's bad and it's bad for my survival, so I'm going to stop smoking. No, no, no. You actually have to take the difficult steps in order to stop smoking. And usually what people end up doing is that they replace their bad habits with what they hope to be better habits. So basically this requires hard work. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys listening have ever gotten rid of a nasty habit. I smoked cigarettes for like 15 years and getting rid of that bad habit was one of the most difficult things in my life. However, I knew that it was worth it. I knew that the light at the end of that tunnel meant that I would live longer, I would live healthier, and I would live a better existence generally. So the long-term idea of what the benefits would be definitely beat out the short-term satisfaction of smoking. Smoking cigarettes is like the love of my life, but I knew that getting rid of that toxic love of my life would improve my overall life. So basically habits need to be centered on balance. So it's the old Taoist uh, mentality, the yin and yang, where if, if you have a habit, but you manage to balance it well, it's not necessarily negative. So I actually know people who can smoke one cigarette or two cigarettes at a party and then not smoke for six months. Well, you know what? It's not good for them, but it's not bad for them either. They somehow manage to balance it. Or people who eat McDonald's uh, once a month or whatever as a treat. But if you do it every day, that's when your habit becomes an addiction. And basically, addiction is terrible because you stop imagining your life without that thing. You basically associate your survival to doing that habitual action. 
Um, so basically, to get rid of an addiction, there are, in my mind, I just jotted down five different steps that we need to take or beliefs that we need to have in order to get rid of our addictions. So the first one is that obviously we need the freedom or the free will to get rid of the addiction in the first place. I mean, if I'm in a jail cell and I'm getting fed McDonald's every day and I want to quit eating McDonald's, well, it's basically eat McDonald's or die. So it's not really good. Number two is that we need new education or a change of beliefs. Now, I'm using the smoking example a lot, but you all know that they used to, uh, doctors used to recommend smoking as a cure for all sorts of different diseases. But let's say that they actually believed that this worked. Well, then there would be no reason to stop smoking. So we actually need to change our beliefs and we need to adjust with new information, with new research, with new scientific discoveries. Smoking is bad. Well, it's time to abandon it. Number three is, of course, we need to establish what is the correct standard for a good and bad habit. And as I said, and as I'll repeat, the standard used to be tradition, but now it is survival. And that is the correct standard because the whole point of life, the whole point of our species is to survive long term. The fourth criteria that we need to get rid of a habit is self-love and a positive attitude. If you hate yourself, you think you're a piece of shit and you don't think you're worth it, then why would you lose weight? Why would you suffer for a better result in the future? It's that simple. You gotta love yourself. Number five, you need to have a will to suffer for the greater good. You need to firmly believe that getting rid of your addiction, that getting rid of your bad habits will benefit you in the long term. You actually need to have faith to a certain extent and not crack under the pressure because it is extremely difficult to get rid of our negative habits. The worst thing we can do to get rid of our negative habits is to hit the bottom of the barrel. So I'm thinking of like pollution, okay? So if climate change reaches such an extent due to our bad habits that we need, you know, that we run out of water or that we need to relocate masses of people, well, this is the worst possible scenario imaginable. You know, why would we wait to hit the absolute bottom of our addiction barrel? Why not address the situation before that point? We know that the bottom of the barrel is coming. We see it coming. So it's up to us to adjust now before we hit that lowest point and that we make our mission of getting unaddicted from our habits as difficult as possible. We must seek balance in our world Unaddiction isn't easy. We drive cars that pollute. We blindly accept nationalism. War is going on. You know, the acceptance of money. I could go on and on on the type of negative habits that we have, but I would say the most negative habit that humanity has as a whole is the habit of false identity. We are in the habit of believing that na nation matters, language matters, religion matters, when really all that matters is humanity. If we could get rid of that addiction to our false identity, which is based on tradition and not survival, we would take the first steps into making our world a better place.